26 years, nine months. Sum mm -hmm. up for me your judicial career. What stands out? Well, I guess. What case? Uh, can I say it? Yeah. Well, some of the cases this is the case we're going to talk about momentarily. That is the, uh, the Jenny Hatch case. Also, the Freedom of Information case. Uh, the, uh, that's on the civil side. Of course, every time I have a mesothelioma case, it sort of like uh, touches you in a way because it deals with uh, individuals who have come down with uh, a disease, and that disease is somewhat uh, fatal, more or less. Mm -hmm. And that touches you as a, a person as opposed to uh, being a judge. And also, all of those cases where I deal with conservators or guardianship cases, they have a very, uh, uh, I should say, humbling effect on you. Now, realizing what the families have to go through as well as the individual who has an ailment, sickness, health, or otherwise. Uh, on the flip side, on the criminal aspect, um, remembering about the victims to crimes that, that we have in our city. Uh, on a, I would say on a weekly basis, someone is getting killed through the use of guns. Uh, I've had three very, I should say, callous uh, gang killings of teenagers in our community. And I can't uh, forget that or put that aside. When, and, and others. I mean, let, let me ask you about that. Let, let's go off on this real quick. And I'm, I'm able to use this interview as I want, right? As Whenever I want? Whatever you want to Okay, do. good. Talk to me about crime. Talk to me about crime in the east end of Newport News. Talk to me about people killing people over drugs and guns and and black on black crime also. What do you see? What do you? What, how does it break your heart? What What do you? You see it every day, don't you? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that all of the judges here, as well as any of the metropolitan areas, they are familiar with the gang violence that we have in our community as well as the proliferation of guns and drugs in our community. In the southeast section of our community, we have situations where the residents of the community are crying out to be safe and free from violence. Uh, in addition to that, we have uh, uh, the police department as in law enforcement trying to curtail the violence by having monies appropriated by the city in order to have these gang uh, activities uh, stopped and providing other opportunities for these young people. We have a situation in our community where with the prolif proliferation of guns and drugs, we find that there are people out here who are taking advantage of the average citizenry by uh, violence and the use of guns on a daily basis. Uh, and that's the heart-wrenching part of it. Uh, how do we address it and other things? The courts can't do it. I mean, we will administer the law and follow what the law tells us we have to do, but that in no way cures the problem. How do we cure the problem? What do you think the solution is? Well, I think you're going to have to bring into the community opportunities for these young people. Instead of being idle, you're going to have to bring in jobs. And maybe in addition to that, there's going to be more education and more outreach in the community. And I think that with the jobs coming in and uh, with better opportunities for housing and with also coming from the family and assisting those families who need help with their children because many times the parents aren't stepping up and actually monitoring their children. It is a vicious cycle, yes sir, vicious cycle where nothing's getting better and therefore the crime rates don't get better either. Do you agree? Or? I agree with that. It, it is a vicious cycle and we find that it's going to take something, I, you know, I, uh, I had always thought that we did what was called the surge over in Iraq. And I was wondering if whether or not we could do something similar in certain communities in order to cut down on the violence. Uh, we need the all members of the community to pay attention to what's going on, 
if they see crime to report it, to work in conjunction with the police, and likewise the police to work in conjunction with the citizens. If they are there to protect and serve, they have to do that. I just recently did a story, Your Honor, about people in the community in the East End who uh, see crime, they know who shot them, they won't cooperate with police. They're afraid, they don't feel like they're gonna be protected, they fear for their families and they just clam up and they don't tell police what they need to know in order to get the bad guys off the streets. Do you see this? You're nodding your head yes, and that is a real issue. That is a primary issue and no one wants to be a snitch. And it's not so much they, they don't want to say, they are many times afraid to say and knowing the repercussions that would happen to them if they would speak up and if they are identified. Uh, and I think that causes problems, but I would encourage all of them, if they see it, to report it. In many cases, you don't have to give your name and let the police investigate it and come up with the individual who's responsible for the crime. The people who know something, it's their responsibility to step up in order to make what you have just described better. That's correct. I mean, they're burying the head in the sand when you have the information, you have the name, you know where the home is. And that's because of the younger people is because they don't believe in snitching for whatever reason. The older people are in many times afraid to say. And there has to be a, a nexus there, that a, a, a program that will reach out to the older people to provide them with some solace and understanding as to uh, their they could involve themselves, but they don't want to be identified, as I said earlier. It also goes to, and I know that you, uh, you, you know this as well, more than anyone, community policing, reaching out, getting familiar faces in the same neighborhoods day after day, the police in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. building that trust, yes? That's correct. And, you know, I believe that uh, the police has instituted programs where they're trying to reach out more than they ever have in the past. But there still has to be a continuing effort, and it has to be renewed on each and every day with the police. In other words, they have to befriend the members of the community because, the, as you were saying, the, the advice that the police need and the information they need comes from the community. And if the police doesn't reach out to individual citizens within the community to show that they're interested in the community, they won't get this information. But the more they reach out, the more they connect with establishing a relationship with the community, the better off that we will all be because information will flow both ways. Let me ask you this. There's a, uh, a movement out there about Black Lives Matter. What do you want to say about that? Black Lives Matter. It doesn't mean that Black lives are the only ones that matter, but they matter. They matter because throughout the United States you can see young black men especially who are killed when there is no effort to made to restrain them in some other way. Uh, there is responsibility on the part of those persons who actually confront the police to obey the police, to follow their orders, but when we look on TV and we see young black men having their hands raised in the air and still they're shot and killed, and when we see the individual who may be standing on a corner selling illegal cigarettes and they end up in a chokehold and dying, and when we see the police not really policing themselves, then uh, that takes away a lot of the respect that we have for law enforcement. And again, it goes to the police doing what they are supposed to do, and that is to protect and to serve. And until that's done, you're going to have these crimes like that. And you need, an, you need the police to be monitored by an agency that's not within the police framework. And I believe that will give more confidence to the public. And so how the... Uh, uh, police will operate and do operate. And so you're saying that police 
when uh, police involved shootings need to be investigated by sources outside of the actual police department and outside of, a, of the Commonwealth attorney's office in a particular city or town, you need to bring in experts or law enforcement officers from other jurisdictions and or maybe the state to look into these uh, to investigate because many times the public is is aware of the fact that the police officers testify in courts of law and their attorney for all intents and purposes is the Commonwealth's attorney. Mm -hmm. The Commonwealth's attorney will have to rule on many times the uh, fatal shootings or the shootings of police on citizen, citizenry. So you need an objective organization, law enforcement, maybe, maybe even a board of citizenry who can look over the facts that's reported investigate and to determine whether or not the shooting was lawful or not. Earlier we were talking football. Mm -hmm. You know that San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick gets on the knee during the Star Spangled Banner. Good or bad? Good. Why? Because the Constitution allows each one of us freedom of expression, freedom of association, the right to dissent, the members who are in the military, who sacrifice themselves for our country, they are doing it so that we all can be free. And that freedom encompasses freedom of expression. On the flip side, would I ever demonstrate like that? No, I wasn't brought up that way. I honor the flag. But it's not disrespecting the flag because a flag is only a symbol. It's what that symbol means. And when Kaepernick does that, he's using what the Supreme Court of the United States said. You know, that's symbolic protest. Mm -hmm. And when he sits down and he doesn't pledge allegiance, he is protesting. And that is what the First Amendment to the Constitution says that every citizen of the United States should have. And we all believe that this country is the greatest country in the world, and it allows us to protest and to demonstrate as long as it's done in a peaceful manner. Black lives matter also. That's correct. Is that what we should be saying, black lives matter? I think also? black lives matter, and the reason it's put like that is because white lives have always mattered. You, didn't, you don't say white lives matter also. It's a given that their lives are matter. Their lives matter. And what we see, as I say it, is that there are too many of the African American population who are killed by law enforcement without justification. And when it's done, you look at what are the results after the investigation is over. Was it treated, was that investigation done fairly? Was it brought before the right uh, judicial body? Did it reach that far? Did an indictment come out of that? Or were, or were officers who did that, were they just whitewashed and not accountable for their actions? Black Lives Matter.